Let's expand the types of conditions that we can translate and compose in Greek uh, to include contrafactual conditions, sometimes called contrary to fact uh, conditions. And these are conditions, if-then statements, in which uh, the protasis is not true. That is, uh, this is sort of a uh, hypothetical situation. So, if x were the case, then y would be the case. So what we're saying is, if x were the case, it's not, okay? In reality, it's not. But if it were, if we lived in an alternate universe, then this would be the logical conclusion. And we can make contrafactuals in both the present and the past. Uh, now, these are going to be a little odd, uh, because the, con uh, the construction of these isn't what you might expect. So let's take a look, uh, just sort of formally, at what we're going to see. Now, what you should know is that in both the present and past condition, uh, contrafactual conditions, in the apodosis, we're going to see the particle on. So when you see this on, you know, or you should, all you know right now is that we're in contrafactual conditions. We'll see this in other places. Uh, one thing you should know about this is that it is post-positive. So it won't be the first word in the clause. Uh, it will usually be the second clause. Now, uh, how do we construct these? If we want to do a present contrary to fact, if x were the case, then y would be the case. We're going to use a in the protasis and the imperfect indicative. And in the apodosis, we're going to use on plus the imperfect indicative. Now, the reason this is odd is you say, well, I'm using an imperfect indicative, but it's present tense. Uh, yes, that's just the way it's going to work here. Uh, so, imperfect indicative, and when you see that on, know that you're in a present a contrary to fact. The past contrary to fact, I'm going to use a plus the aorist indicative. And then on plus the aorist indicative in the hypothesis. Right, so imperfect is our present, aorist is our past contrafactuals. So let's take a look at some of these and see how to translate them. The present contrafactuals first. Notice all of these verbs are going to be imperfect. In our apodices, apodices, they're all the particle on, and they're all in the second position. So, e ho anthropos u epraten, agathos on aim. If the man were doing well, he would be good. So if he were, he would. Or, and this is a current state. So he's not. He's not doing well, and therefore he's not good. In, in the negative, e ho anthropos me epipten, iu an epraten. If the man were not falling, he would be faring well. Right? He is, in fact, falling, and therefore he's faring poorly. E ho anthropos me kakos ein, uk an epifugen. If the man were not wicked, he would not be running away. So we get this, uh, in fact, he is wicked, and therefore he is fleeing. So that's our present counterfactuals, were, would be. Our past counterfactuals, a ho, notice, remember, past counterfactual, we're going to use our aorist. So all of these verbs are in the aorist. This should be, should be aorist. Eproxen. E ho anthropos iu eproxen hoi paides on iu eproxan. If the man had done well, had fared well, the children would have fared, fared well. If he had, they would have. 
eho anthropos me epesim, eu an eproxim. If the man had not fallen, he would have fared well. And finally, eho polemioi me es ebalam, ho anthropos uk an epefugem. If the enemy had not attacked, the man would not have fled. So, for our translation, had this happened, would have. Keep in mind, all of these are going to have our ons. So when you see that on in a condition, your, mem your mind should right away look to the verbs, look to the tenses. Uh, that actually should be eris there. Apefugon. Apefugen. You would not have. So back to the, my main point, though, is that if you see the on, look to see, is it imperfect indicative or aorist indicative? If it's imperfect indicative, we've got a present contrafactual. And if it's aorist, we've got a past contrafactual.